So one of the most pressing questions for multifamily investors is how long should they keep their assets? Should they keep it for two to three to five or 10 years or should you just sell quick? Should you sell at all or keep them as part of your growing portfolio? These answers all depend on different factors in your future investment plans and strategies and tax strategies. There's no right and wrong way of doing this. It really has to do with aligning with your interests with your partners and investors. Today I'd like to tell you about SAR Apartment Capital, how we handle our deals. Now, we do go into all our deals with a, with a long-term debt strategy. We try to make sure that we are protected with securing long-term debt. But that does not mean in particular that we are set in our ways where we're going to say we're going to exit at year 5, we're going to exit at year 10. A lot of things happen throughout the years or throughout your renovation, throughout your value add process. that could change your mind on your exit. So, particularly, we've had some exits that we've exited in 14 months. We had an exit recently where we exited in six months. It was a portfolio that we dismantled and sold in a very short period of time. So, every deal that we handle, we analyze, and as a group and as a team with our partners, we decide this is a good exit. This is a good offer. We're not gonna get a better offer than this. Look at the market conditions. Those are things that you got to constantly analyze when you're considering your exits. And we have a freedom of doing that in uh, SAR Apartment Capital. I know a lot of investors are used to a set business plan of we're exiting year five or a year four and five. I see that all the time. And we're probably not the investors that you want to invest with if you want a 10 year or 20 year or 15 year long goal. Uh, if we see an opportunity to triple, double our money in two years or 14 months, we will take it. It is a doubles game for us. Uh, we want to grow our capital as fast as possible, and we are always in the business, so we are constantly 1031-ing our, our investment. In the last couple months, we've done three 1031 exchange. We gave our investors a 40% return on their money. That's how, that, that's how high the returns were, and guess what? They just came right back with us and reinvested in a 1031 exchange. But let's go more into details of different ways of looking at uh, a deal and when to exit. So our strategy is value add, as simple as that. So as we increase the NOI of a property, we create a significant increase of value. A lot of things could happen in the next couple of years. So one which is cap rate decompression. If I exit in year two or three, and hopefully cap rates have not decompressed significantly, it benefits my investors because they get a bigger profit from the sale. Big profits from the sale means higher IRRs for the project, higher IRRs is for our passive investors is a big deal. That is always the ultimate goal. For example, if in three years the cap rate is the same, say 5% per every 100K in increased NOI, I increase the value of the building by 2 million. If in 10 years from now, the cap rates goes up 6%, then the same 100K increase in NOI will be only an increase of value of, for the building at 1.67 million, about $333,000 less. Of course, longer term, the income should have increased more, but the faster the increase in value, the higher the internal rate of return is. Now, you could argue and say, well, you know what? Real estate always goes up, so if you hold long term, there's economic growth and there's equity growth and so on and so on. But if you only bank on that, what if you go into a recession, which the rumors are very serious that it, we are walking into one and we might just be in one already. So your equity could be completely wiped out. They were wiped out in 2008. So just think about that, that perspective. So by exiting quickly, I could compound my returns for my investors and they can choose to reinvest their capital into another value add deal through the forms of a 1031 exchange. The IRR factors to the time value of money, so the faster the money is reinvested after it grows, the more it will grow. So here you have two investments. Investment A, you get a 2x equity multiple after five years, but investment B, you get a 3x multiple after 10 years. Which one is better investment? Hands down investment A, especially if you can reinvest it 
in another deal with a 2x equity multiple again. That means that you grew your capital four times in 10 years. That's the, that's the value add that I love. So one of the benefits of also exiting faster than expected or shorter period of time investments is that you're able to do your 1031 exchange into another deal. That is how you're going to compound. Now that ability to do that is not easy. You need to work with an investor that is constantly sourcing deals, sourcing great deals. You don't want to get into an average deal because then that just will slow up your equity multiple. So that is a key factor to working with a group that is constantly with deal flow. That way you could exit and do those flips in less period of time. So fourth is I love the value add projects because with a little bit of work or maybe more than a little bit of work, you can increase your NOI and increase the value. And in a few years, you could refinance, take your money out and reinvest it. That is one of the most popular syndication forms of investing. If one is done correctly, it could also be a very successful form of investing. So by you increasing the value big enough, I could do a refinance, return all or most of all the capital back to my investors within 24 months. And then they can retain their ownership in the deal and their equity does not go away. This is, this is one of the t best and most popular ways of reinvesting in multifamilies. So fit this, you gotta protect your cash flow from higher interest rates when you can. Sometimes your timing is not right and you have to refinance and you might be in an environment where there's not low interest rates. So let's say my strategy is not to value add my NOI and remain the same on year five or year 10, but the interest rates goes up 100 basis points. During those years, my cash flow has actually dropped because of the higher debt services. So the sooner that you can exit, you can avoid that risk of higher interest rates. The higher the interest rates are, the lower your value of the property is going to be. Now I must add, you must always protect your assets with long-term debt. If you're gonna go down this route of refinancing your property, don't make the mistakes of taking out two or three year loans or even five years. Always try to secure five year debt, get your prepayment penalty as little as possible, but do not make the mistake. I've made them early in my career. Do not get those low, those low short term debts that will put you in trouble, especially in changing markets. So my conclusion is the whole deparing depends on many factors as you should study your options carefully. Sometimes selling is not even needed. I think as an investor, you have a lot of different options. Like I mentioned before, you have to really align with your views and your vision as a group and as a team as with your partners. If you're young and you wanna get, you wanna double your money and it's a doubles game for you, you gotta align yourself with the investors that see aligned with you. If you're an investor that's looking just for long-term passive income, you're not interested in doing a lot of transactions, then the long-term investment is your vehicle. Um, I can tell you that we mix them up. We have our long-term and we have our short-term. If and whenever we get a chance to double our money, we will do that. So it really depends on your investment. And I'm glad you guys heard me out today. If you have any questions, please hit me up. This is Abiel signing out.